Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, what are you leaning over like that for? I'm tying my shoelace. But that is what I'm here for. You're not supposed to lean over. Can't I even tie my own little shoelace? No, you can't. Men who've had concussions don't. Since when? Since always. Now, sit up. (laughs) Can't even tie my own shoelace. Oh, shut up. That's a nice way to talk to a man who's just out of the hospital. Uh Aha, now you're feeling sorry for yourself. Darn right I am. Can't even tie my own shoelace. There. Now, sit back on the sofa. Mm-hmm. I am, ma'am. Cushion's all right, sir? Oh, go away. There. Oh, it's certainly a beautiful day out, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Look how bright the sun's shining. Still, it's not hot. It's fall. The first fall in Eastbrook, darling. Yep, that's it. Listen to that bird right outside the window. Where is it? So cheerful. Oh, I hope they don't go soft till late this year. I miss the singing. They'll probably miss your chattering, too. Wonder what he's so happy about. Oh, it's a beautiful fall day, and he's out in it, flying around. The sky's the limit. Must be nice being a bird. Especially a love bird. Say, why, uh, why don't you go out, darling? Now, what do I want to go out for? I can go out any time. There'll be lots of perfect fall days to go out in. There'll be lots of days when you won't be around for me to sit with. So I'm staying right here beside you. All right. Just as you like. Beside you, ensconced in... How do you like that word, ensconced? Mm, ensconced. That's a, that, that's a 75 cent mm, word, that is. At least. With you ensconced right beside the open window. It's just like being out and in at the same time. Do all of your silver linings have clouds, Mrs. Norton? Not today. Today, everything is silver lining. No clouds. Because you're home, because you look a lot healthier than you did yesterday. Because I... I thought you told me that I looked wonderful yesterday. Well, maybe I exaggerated a little. Today you look even more like you. I don't know how good that is. Perfect. Oh. Oh, David, I missed you so when you were in the hospital. I'm not ever going to be separated from you again. Is, uh, Is that final? Absolutely final. Final. After all, it took a car accident to separate us, and since we're not going to have another one, we're safe. Knock wood. It's awfully sweet of you, darling, to stay with me all, all the time like this, but don't you have something to do? You trying to get rid of me? Mm, might be. No, thanks. I had plenty of time to do all the things I had to do when you were at the hospital. Well, what about the baby? Oh, Mama's taking care of Bobby. Oh. I'm giving him a vacation from me. <laughs> he probably needs it. He probably does. <laughs> David, if you lean out the window a little ways, you can watch the men at work on the barn. Yeah, I was watching them this morning, but... It's not well, comfortable leaning out the window, is it? It's not very comfortable either watching the barn go up without you. Still feeling sorry for yourself? More than ever. Good. Why good? Because you wouldn't be enough man for me if you weren't impatient. Look, here comes Fritz with the wheelbarrow. What's he doing? Well, I think he's going to clear the south meadow. He said if the weather held, he was going to do it today. The way that man works. He's worth six. Hey, Fritz, come on over here to the window a minute. Hello, Mrs. Norton. Hello, Mr. Norton. Hello, Fritz. You're feeling better? Oh, I'm feeling fine. Yes, you have the look of a man who is home again. Hospitals may get you well, but they never get you healthy. Not the way the home does. <laughs> Well, I certainly wish I were out there cleaning that meadow with you, Fritz. Oh, yes, you will be soon. Well, not a minute too soon. I'll but you, you must take your time. One does not monkey with a concussion of the brain, or else one has a great deal of trouble. Mm. I know. Or I wouldn't let myself be crippled like this. Well, i better be on my way. The shadows are getting longer. Well, take it easy, Fritz. Oh, yes. When I work, I always take it easy. Oh, yes. Your idea of taking it easy. See you later. Oh, I come in after dinner. We discuss the cow. Good, good. Where's Bertha, Fritz? She's hanging up the laundry in the back of the house. Thanks. Everybody busy, 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 busy. Mama's bathing Bobby. Fritz is clearing the south meadow. Paradiso 
Rebuilding my barn, Bertha hanging up the laundry, and I can't even tie my own shoelace. You're busy, too, darling. Oh, up to my ears. You're not only busy getting well, but you're busy entertaining me. That's a full-time job. You're funny. Funny how? Funny attractive? Funny nice or funny peculiar? Funny, funny. Well, that's funny. Would you like to play checkers or something? I would not. I'd love to play checkers. You always told me when you had time you'd make an expert on Well, I don't have that much time, I hope. David, can't you understand that even though you're not enjoying this, I am? I always thought you were a fine little actress. Oh, you're impossible. Stubborn, that's why. Everything you say is so. I never believed that a few days in a hospital would change a man so. David, how'd you like a glass of milk? I would not like a glass of milk. Don't tell me it's good for me. But it is. It settles it. I'll not drink another glass of milk as long as I live. Honestly. It's a good thing that women aren't men. They'd never have babies. Uh, Say that again? Well, they just wouldn't be able to go through with it if they were men. No. And you can drop that left eyebrow, Mr. Norton. You know perfectly well what I mean. How right you are. Mm. Mm. Wonder who that is. Guess I better go see. Guess you better. Hello. Why, hello, Jimmy. I'm glad to see you again, Mrs. Norton. Well, I'm glad to see you too, Jimmy. I've come to visit Mr. Norton. Um, well, that's awfully nice of you, but, um... Is he home? Oh, yes, he's home. He's in the living room. Oh, that's swell. I was afraid he wouldn't be home. Well, he'll be home for a little while longer. Oh, can I see him? Uh, well, I tell you, you you wait here and I'll go and see if he's busy. He might be busy. Hokey doke Oh, how's your little baby, Mrs. Norton? Oh, he's growing fast, Jimmy. Maybe someday he'll be old enough to play with you. (laughs) Oh, he'll never catch up with me. He's too little. I'll be right back, Jimmy. David, it's a visitor for you. Uh, Who is he? Jimmy. The little boy you went fishing with, remember? What's he doing here? Well, he's come to visit with you. He was so pleased when I told him you were home. He's a nice kid. How about seeing him? He's, he's come all the way over here. Mm, I suppose I should. Good. I'll tell him to come in. He, he won't stay too long, darling. I, I can hint very subtly when I have to. Come on in, Jimmy. Mr. Norton's right here in the living room. David, you have a visitor. Swell. Hi there, Mr. Norton. It's sure swell to see you. Well, I'm going to leave you two for a minute. I've got and talked to Bertha. Well, Jimmy, how come you're not out playing baseball with the boys? How come you're here? Hasn't school started? Oh, sure. School started for weeks already. But I'm not allowed to play baseball yet. Why not? What's the matter? Oh, I had the measles. And my ma says I gotta take it easy for a while. You know how women are. Yes, I know how women are. I feel fine. Been up and around for a week already. But my ma, she says I'll get sick again if I get myself overheated or something. Women worry an awful lot. So I figure it's easier just to do what my ma says. Of course, the course of least resistance you've learned young. Say, what are you doing home, Mr. Norton? I just came over here on a chance, but I didn't really expect that you'd be here. Well, I'm following the course of least resistance, too. I was in a car accident a couple weeks ago. You were? Mm -hmm. Gee. Yeah, I ended up in the hospital. Say, what do you know? Oh, I wasn't very sick or anything, but I had to stay in the hospital for a little while. Gee, Willikers, that sounds a lot more important than the measles. You mean you were in a car accident and you lived? Well, it looks that way. My ma, she always tells me to watch out or I'll be killed. But, say, you must be awful strong. Tell me about it. Oh, there's not much to tell. My car got hit by another car. and next thing I knew, I was in the hospital. Now I'm, I'm home and that's all there is to it. You have to take it easy, too, huh? Mm, for a while. Gosh, that's swell. We can take it easy together. <laughs> I've been looking for somebody like me, but, gee, I'm awful glad you're around. I've been kind of looking for something to do. I've been kind of that way myself, Jimmy. The days sure do seem awful long when there are so many things you can't do. Well, the days go by and pretty soon you've forgotten that they even existed. Well, I guess so. Trouble is, I... I guess I hate to miss so much of what's going on. They'll still be going on when you're ready for them to be. Well, I hope so. Every now and then it's it's kind of good not to be doing everything yourself. It is? Mm-hmm. How? I don't seem to think it's so good. Well, it makes you appreciate them more. Look at this beautiful day, for instance. If I were out in it, I'd be so busy working on the barn or in the fields, I probably wouldn't have time to think about what a swell day it is. But 
Sitting here and nothing else to do, I can I can smell the air and look at the leaves and the rustling of the trees, and I have time to say to myself, hmm, what a day. Hmm. And uh, think of all your friends who are playing baseball. Do you like the boys? Oh, they're all right. What are their names? Oh, well, there's Tom and there's Harry and Mike. Are they good friends of yours? Oh, I see them a lot. But you don't even think about them, do you? Not much. But today you're wishing that you were out in a sandlot playing baseball with them, don't you? Now, when you think of Mike, he seems like a pretty good fellow to you, doesn't he? He sure can hit that ball. He plays third base. <laughs> well, when you see Mike tomorrow, now, he'll be your pal. Well, I guess so. That's what I meant about liking things more because you, you can't have them. Oh, I see. Mm, so do I now. Uh, you play ball? Used to. What position? First base. That's what I play. Say, a really exciting thing happened to me once. I was at the opening game at the Yankee Stadium a few years ago, and I caught a ball in the center field bleachers. You did? Mm, that's the honest truth. There I was, sitting right there in the center field, minding my own business, when all of a sudden, we down there at home plate, Babe Ruth. Started. Babe Ruth? Mm, the babe hits the ball, and out it sails. And, and you caught the ball? Well, I got the ball. Would you like to see it? Would I? You bet I would. Uh, Claudia. Yes, David. Claudia, you know that baseball that's in the top left-hand uh, drawer over there. You want to bring it over to me? Oh, sure. I'll get it. Gee, Mr. Norton. Babe Ruth. Can I touch it? You sure can. Now, here. Here, thanks, Aunt. Now, here, you can wrap your fingers around that one. Mm. And you can tell your friends that they're shaking the hand that held the ball that broke up the game when the Bambino swat knocked it into the bleachers. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Holy mackerel is right. Jimmy, you know you're the best medicine in, in the world for Mr. Norton. And because you're such good medicine, we're going to give you that ball for your own very own to keep, hmm? A ball hit by Babe Ruth. Gee willikers! Youth has its favorite tunes, its favorite costumes, its favorite books. And when young people are out for a good time, ice-cold Coca-Cola is what they order. Coke is what they like at home, too, for their own pleasure and as a hospitable greeting to their friends. Keep plenty of Coke on hand, and your home is likely to rate high with a junior set. Swell guy, that Mr. Norton, isn't he? Oh, I think he's the best, Jimmy. Can you beat it? I'm going to get a ball hit by Babe Ruth. Oh, that certainly is something, boy. It sure is. What did I do to get it? Oh, have you ever tried to explain something to somebody else and, uh, in explaining, understood it better yourself? Yeah. Well, that's what you did for David. You let him understand better. And that's all I did. Oh, I got some present for doing a little. Well, actually, presents, Jimmy, don't have to be deserved at all. They're just forgiving. But come again tomorrow. David needs company or he'll get himself into trouble. Into trouble? So much time on his hands, you know. Tomorrow, for instance, uh, a little trouble with the telephone company. Boy! Well, we'll find out more about it tomorrow. So long, Jimmy. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>